offshore wind farm Dan Tursk, foundation installation. 90 kilometers off the coast of Germany in the North Sea, Vattenfall and Stadtwerke Munich are building the Dan Tursk offshore wind farm. 80 wind turbines with a total capacity of 288 megawatts will provide up to 400,000 households with green electricity. Esbjerg, Denmark. The harbour here is the hub for the loading of components destined for the wind farm. Vattenfell Surveillance Centre is also located here. It's from here that the company controls all its turbines across Europe. On each trip, the vessel can transport a total of four foundation sets consisting of a monopile and a transition piece. The Dantusk offshore wind farm, situated 70 kilometers west of the island of Zylt and directly on the German-Danish border, will be one of the first large-scale offshore wind farms ever to be built in the German North Sea. In order to install the wind turbines safely and securely in water that is between 21 and 32 meters deep, the foundations are anchored 40 meters into the seabed. Monopiles are the most efficient foundation structure for the conditions of the Dan Tusk wind farm. We are out here to build 80 foundations, but during construction it's a big challenge to handle the, the harsh forces of the environment. On average, it takes 90 minutes to drive each monopile into the seabed. To protect sensitive harbour porpoises, the engineers are working with and testing new technologies to reduce noise levels. Here they're using what's called a bubble curtain, consisting of three rings of air bubbles around the foundation. They have proven to be an effective way of mitigating the noise for the needs of the Dantusk wind farm. Experiences gained in the Dantusk project will contribute to the learning curve of future offshore wind projects. Uh, we are here because Wattenfall believes that the renewable energy is the future and so therefore we, we actually think that the offshore wind is a big part of, of renewables uh, in the coming future. When the foundation has been driven into the seabed, the transition piece, a connecting element with the turbine tower, is placed on top. The transition piece has electrical installations inside and a landing stage outside to permit safe access from the sea. What is new on offshore wind is to get set up some kind of cereal production, but we are on a very good way to get all these huge amount of foundations and wind farms out in the sea. To stabilize the two foundation elements, an underbase grouting is used to provide evenly distributed support to the offshore structures for the next 25 years. In order to connect the monopile with the transition piece, the gap between the components is filled with high strength concrete known as grout. The final phase of foundation installation was successfully completed in December 2013. Due to its location, the Dan Tusk wind farm needs its own offshore substation in order to transport the electricity back to shore. The substation has been built in the Netherlands and is nearly ready to be taken offshore. In its finished state, the offshore substation is around 30 meters high and measures 36 by 40 meters. It feels incredible now, after more than five years, to see such a big substation ready. The weight of the substation would force the transport barge downwards during the loading process, but a system of air chambers balances the weight at exactly the right moment, helping the top side to finally reach its position. The substation starts its journey through the canal of Rotterdam for a two-day trip to Dan Tusk. The final challenge, the installation, still awaits the team. 70 kilometers offshore of the German island Zylt, wind and waves dictate the daily work. However, the strong wind ensures a high level of green energy production and its constancy keeps the grid system quite stable. Dan Tusk will be Vattenfall's 10th offshore wind farm, reinforcing the company's position as a leading player in offshore wind energy. The substation primarily consists of two parts. 
The construction starts with the first part, the foundation, called the jacket. It's set onto the 25-metre-deep seabed and fixed into place with around 50-metre-long monopiles that are piled deep into the ground. For this job, Vattenfall commissioned one of the most experienced offshore installation crews. Out here, health and safety is taken very seriously. In the offshore environment, we have recognised that there are risks, but where there are risks, we eliminate them by assessment and we make the right choices. When the substation's foundation is built, part two of the construction, the so-called topside, will be prepared for installation. The Vattenfall crew is on site at all times to manage and control every single step of this special lifting operation, with three ships supporting the process at the same time. Well, you could say that the top site or the substation is uh, basically the heart of uh, the whole wind farm because it will uh, transform the energy so that it can be transported to shore. As the lifting operation comes to its climax, the crane stands still and the huge work vessel, Oleg Strashnov, is the only thing moving. The substation will collect the electricity from the 80 Dantusk wind turbines transforming the energy to a higher voltage for transportation to shore with a minimum loss of energy through the use of direct current. These workers in the port of Esbjerg are loading up to 10 complete wind turbines onto the installation vessel. A great deal of planning has gone into this operation. The most exciting moment for me personally was when we loaded the ship for the first time and saw the turbines stationed on board. We've spent between one and a half to two years in total working towards this day, and it was really great to see everything completed on time without any issues, and to get everything on board without sinking. The towers and nacelles are followed by the rotor blades, up to 30 of which are carried on each trip. The Pacific Osprey is the world's largest installation vessel, developed and built in accordance with Vattenfall specifications. When we started the Dantus project, this vessel hadn't yet been built and was still on the drawing board. When we entered the planning stage, we were able to bring our ideas. Ultimately, we managed to position the components and plan the logistics just as we had envisaged. The vessel is 161 meters long and has individual cabins for 111 people on board. Made of a special kind of steel, the six legs can lift the structure and its entire load to a height of 20 meters above sea level, supporting a total weight of 26,000 tons. This provides a stable work platform on which the installation work can be carried out. The towers are installed as a single unit. They are pre-assembled in the port in order to speed up the offshore installation process. The 270-ton, 66-meter-high tower gracefully glides out over the North Sea as a single unit before being fastened to the transition piece. After the tower, the next step is to install the nacelle. With a weight of around 200 tons, the nacelle is lifted by the vessel's main crane towards the tower. 116 special steel bolts are used to fasten the nacelle. This calls for extreme focus at a dizzying height. Then come the three rotor blades. To install them demands pinpoint precision from the crane operator. Each rotor blade is around 60 meters in length. I am convinced that offshore wind power will play an important part in the future supply of energy. When I think of renewable energy and my four-year-old daughter, it fills me with pride to be a part of this fantastic project. Provided the weather plays ball and the wind is not too strong, the installation work can be carried out without interruption. The technicians and ship crew work hand in hand around the clock. In ideal conditions, it has sometimes been possible to erect 10 turbines in 10 days. The Pacific Osprey only had to be loaded and taken into the construction zone nine times during the summer. This excellent progress significantly increases the cost effectiveness of the wind farm and bolsters the generation of renewable energy.
The electricity that consumers draw from the German power grid reflects the energy mix we have in Germany nowadays. This energy mix is made up of both conventional and renewable energy. It follows that as more and more renewable energy gets fed into the electricity grid and supplied to the consumer, there will be a steady decline in the amount of conventional energy that gets fed into the grid and consumed. In the future, renewable energy will become Vattenfall's core business and wind power plays a crucial role in the company's strategy.